Hey everyone, Jeff here. Welcome back to Imagination Tech. So ISDT stopped production on their Q6 line of chargers, which includes the Q6 Lite, Q6 Plus, and the Q6 Pro, which have been favorites of many FPV pilots for the past couple of years. But they've launched their new Q series chargers, which includes the Q6 Nano, which is a lighter, but uh, just as powerful as the original Q6 Lite, and the Q8 and Q8 Max chargers. Today I have here the Q8 charger, which I think is the successor to the original Q6 line, and we are going to be checking out this charger. Stay tuned. So this is the ISDT Q8 charger. It's a 500 watt charger and it can take an 8S input and it can also charge up to an 8S battery. So that's a 34 volts input and also 34 volts maximum output. Now um, to get the most out of this uh, 500 watt charger, you um, if you have a 24 volt uh, power supply, then this can take up to a maximum of 20 amps, which uh, gives you around 480 watts, which is pretty close to uh, to the max of 500 watts. Probably you know pro it's probably good enough. But um, yeah, so um, opening this box up, I am very happy to see, very happy to say that there is a you know a hard manual. <laughs> This also comes with some stickers, so we'll. Um, you can also download this instruction manual from the website. Uh, I'll put the link in the description if you're interested in that. Um, much like the Q6, um, this also comes with this um, screen protector. Comparing the Q8 with the Q6 Pro, the screen itself is uh, pretty much identical. Uh, it has the same same size, uh, sa same square dimensions, but the body is. Uh, different because uh, with the Q8 it's now rectangular as opposed to the Q6 Pro which is like a, a wedge. Uh, this also means that it's uh, now facing directly upwards as opposed to the angled uh, screen of the Q6 Pro. Um, there is now a micro USB port on the side which is uh, which is great because I could not figure out which, which wire I was supposed to use with the Q6 Pro. And the balance port also has, um, you know, it, it can take up to an 8S battery. So that's a uh, very good, but it's, it's still very, very, very much compact. And aside from uh, you know uh, bulging a little bit, um, it's still going, you know it's wherever you used to fit your Q6 Pro. It's the Q8 is uh, most of the time, it's probably 90% of the time, it's still gonna fit. Another good thing about that is if you have a 3D printed cover for your Q6 Pro, then that means that it's going to fit your Q8 perfectly as well although you, know, you, you don't have a need for this anymore but uh, you know at least it's the screen wise it's still pretty it's, it's still compatible so let's power this thing up and see uh, and check out the features of this thing so the interface of the Q8 is uh, pretty much similar to the, to the old Q, Q6 interface however they're using a new OS uh, they're calling it the SC OS 2.0 and uh, but yeah it's uh, the interface the in the the graphical user inter interface is uh, still pre pretty much uh, you know the same standard uh, isdd format now uh, the capacitive buttons don't have any haptic feedback so um, that's something that you probably will miss with the old q6 pro uh, scroll wheel uh, because this one doesn't have any any tactile feedback uh, whereas the scroll wheel you can feel the the, the tense and you feel the clicking as you scroll and of course uh, when you press it you know that you press it but here you know um, you don't uh, aside from the audio feedback there uh, you, you don't know if you pressed it correctly so just like the old interface if you hold the center button um, for I think around two seconds you can go into the, the Q8 settings I've set the backlight the backlight to low because um, it's actually too bright for the camera but uh, all of the settings are on default there is still oh there's that's something cool touch slide is on okay so okay uh, this is something uh, you know that's a really cool feature since they um, got rid of the scroll wheel but they do have a slider you can use uh, you can slide your fingers and uh, you can just slide through the menu options there's still the self-test and the calibration 
so uh, you can fine tune um, you know if you have a if you have a multi uh, high precision multimeter you can compare the values that the the I, this Q8 is getting versus the actual multimeter reading that you're getting so you can adjust that but we're not going to do that now so a short press on the uh, on the action key will bring you to the regular charge settings uh, you can set your current I will set it to 1.3 because I don't want that to explode. So we'll just set it to 1C because it's a 1300 milliamp hour battery. Um, so you can choose between different settings, charge, discharge, which uh, the discharge has a maximum discharge of 1.5 amps. Unlike, uh, it, I think it used to be, uh, I think it used to be just uh, 0.5 amps uh, with a uh, old, old Q, uh, Q6. Uh, I'm not I'm really too sure about that. Uh, let's try discharging it for a bit. So this is discharging it at 1 amp. Um, so the maximum discharge rate is 1.5 watt, sorry, 15 watts. So that means if you are discharging a 10 volt battery, then um, yeah, you're only going to be able to do, do it at 1 amp. So that's probably one of the factors that's um, affecting the discharge rate. So um, you have your charge or discharge or storage, you know about that. But uh, two new features is the DC power and destroy. We'll, we'll get uh, to that in a bit. Uh, let's do a standard charge process first. So again, the interface is pretty much similar to uh, what it used to before. Um, um, aside from a few graphical uh, changes, uh, pretty much nothing has changed. So here's a 6S pack that I want to retire because as you can see, uh, cell number 6 is uh, it's very low compared to the other cells and it's uh, self-discharging. Uh, it heats up and so it, the cell number 6 is actually uh, a bit bloated so I want to retire this battery. So normally what you would do is you would go to task and then select discharge which I have already done. And um, by default, this goes. Uh, th this is set to 3.3 volts, so it discharges discharges it down to 3.3 volts. But you can change this to 3.2 volts, and that's the lowest setting that you can set it to. Um, however, after it does discharges to 3.2 volts, you you still need to um, throw this um, your lipo battery into a tub of water with salt or salt water. Uh, to, to fully discharge it to zero or if you have a small light bulb that you can use with the ISDT Q8 and presumably the other uh, ISDT chargers uh, that has the SCOS 2.0 uh, there is now a selection called destroy and what this will do is it will discharge it down to zero volts and you can't can change changes to any other voltage um, current is also has a maximum 1.5 amps just like discharge and so I'm just going to start that. It's going to prompt you just to double check that you really want to destroy this. Scroll up to uh, select, highlight the check and then click on that. And you can see that there's a, uh, there's a cute, nice little uh, skull icon at the bottom, which uh, signifies that it's destroying this battery. It's going to discharge it to zero volts. And afterwards, you can just throw it in the bin or to your uh, nearest recycling center. Now let's take a look at another new feature they've introduced called DC power. So you go to the task and select DC power and this lets you choose the output voltage as well as the maximum current uh, that's, that can be output on out onto the output port. So this is going to be a fixed voltage and a maximum current. So if you want it to output a fixed 24 volts up to a maximum of, uh, maximum of 10 amps you can do so and then you can just Turn it, turn it on and off through this interface. Now let me show you some examples of where you can use this. If you have another charger, this one is a, an ultra power UPS6 and I use this to, pa to charge my 1S batteries. Um, unfortunately, this can't handle uh, anything more than 18 volts. So, um, you know, um, I'm powering this off of a 19 volts laptop charger. So um, I'm pretty limited with, uh, with what I can power this with. But now I can just, you know, take my harness plug this in I have it set to 12 volts and 10 amps and I can just turn on the output and it powers on here I have my TS100 I've set my uh, ISDT Q8 to 24 volts and 10 amps and let's turn that on so really um, if you have the Q8 uh, you just need to bring your power supply and you bring your Q8 and you can practically power any device that you might possibly have so long as you have the right you know um, 
XT60 harness or adapter or converter. So here's where you will really miss a scroll wheel because even with the slide function, it's uh, pretty cumbersome to you know to scroll this uh, down or up, and sometimes it mistakenly confuses your input as a button press. So this massive contraption right here is my 3D printer. It is a 101 hero and uh, it really sucks, but at least it gets the job done. But uh, right now, um, it's drawing 3.5 amps. It's still heating up the extruder. And uh, maybe in a bit, it will start printing. Well, I'll be damned. It is moving. And it's still drawing uh, around 5 amps max. So yeah, definitely this can power up a printer. Updating the firmware on your Q8 is now very, very simple, especially now that it has a standard micro USB port. Uh, you also need to download and install this uh, their firmware updater tool, which uh, I will link to into in the description below. And uh, you just need to check your uh, for updates. Um, right now, I have my Q8 is uh, at version 1.0.0.36, and we are going to be updating it to 1.0.1.5 by clicking on the update button. Your Q8 will restart and um, it will show updating on its screen and it'll, it, it, this won't even take a minute to complete. So once the firmware update is complete, your Q8 will restart and the, the firmware um, updater tool will refresh and show that you are now at 1.0.1.5. Okay, after performing the update, um, the discharge rate voltage range can now, can now go down as low as 3.1 volts. I'm um, not sure what the highest one was, but right now it's 3.7 volts. With my old Q6 charger, you could set the the charge voltage to 4.15 all the way to 4.25. So I'm, I wasn't able to check the default values on this Q8, but after, the, after updating the firmware, it can now go from 4.1 volts to 4.3 volts uh, as, the, as the target voltage um, when you're charging your LiPos. But uh, I'm just going to put that back again. This touchscreen slide interface isn't, you know, doesn't feel as good as if it had a solid scroll wheel, but, you know, I think that's a minor gripe right now. I'm not sure if this feature was here before, uh, before the firmware update, but um, the Q8 saves the last five current settings that you've chosen. So, for example, if you're char charging a typical 4S 1300 milliamp hour battery, you charge it at 1.3 amps. Um, if you have an 1800 milliamp hour battery, I would use this. Um, this probably for, you know, when I'm charging my two, two 450 milliamp hour 2S batteries, for example. So if I choose that, then it goes back to the top of the list. So the last, uh, the la it only saves up to the last five, but, um, you know, you typically, I only typically use two, uh, two or three different current settings. But if you choose something else, then that's going to show up on the top of your list the next time uh, you bring this up. So it's actually very, very useful if you, you know, all of your most common settings will appear here and makes the charging uh, workflow actually um, much faster. The much touted dark mode on uh, on the website is uh, only available right now at release uh, for the Q8 Max. However, they did mention on the website that uh, they might release a future firmware release um, to enable dark mode, but unfortunately, as of this uh, as of this firmware update, there still is no dark mode. Uh, the auto feature has been there since uh, with a with a default uh, firmware, um, and it has a, an infrared sensor right here. But um, yeah, it doesn't. It's not very obvious when um, you know when it's set to auto because um, it's typically usually very bright anyway. And I've tried covering this up, and I didn't. I didn't notice any measurable difference in um, the output of the of the brightness of the screen. So that is my review of the Q8 charger, which I think uh, the Q8 is the successor to the QX line, not the Q6 Nano, because uh, the Q6, the original Q6 line, has the same dimensions. This has more power, um, while as the Q, the, the newer Q6 Nano. Um, they made it into a budget version, so it's uh, just as powerful as the Q6 Lite. It's, it has a smaller screen. It needs to have the same screen. It's, this one is just oriented vertically. And uh, I was really planning to just, you know, keep using the, the, my Q6 Pro, which goes up to 300 watts, and I wasn't even maximizing that. But uh, after having used the Q6, the, sorry, the Q8 for, for even that short time, um, I'm pretty convinced that you know the the features that this has is rock solid. I don't think I'm going to be using the 8s, 6s. The 6s is uh, plenty for me, but uh, yes, this really. Um, I, mean, I, I don't know anymore. This is a really really good charger. Um, the DC power and the, the destroy features are really really useful to me. 
Um, so uh, you know, if you if you are upgrading, if you're planning on upgrading from any of the Q6 line of chargers, then don't go for the Q6 Nano. Go for the Q8. Uh, I think the Q8 Max might be overkill. I mean, it's a thousand watts. Do you really need a thousand watts? It's not a dual charger as well. So. Um, unless you're really flying really big batteries, 8S batteries, uh, flying X-Class or B-Class uh, quadcopters, then maybe the Q8 Max might be for you. But for most of the FPV pilots uh, that I know would probably uh, be very be happy with the Q8 charger. That is going to be it for my review. Uh, I think the Q8 is a winner, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I put a lot of effort into it. So uh, if you appreciate what I do here, uh, I also have a link to my coffee account down below in the description. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave you with that. Uh, please hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed because I have another charger coming out very, very soon, right? So anyway, in the meantime, keep building and keep flying.